Hi everyone, today we have another colouring book review. This is Nature's Sweet Moments, 50 Super Cute Designs to Colour by Jane Maday, or May Maday, I think it's Maday. Um, this is a really thick book and I was first notified of this book's existence by a friend of mine who goes under the handle of P Pacific Northwest PNW Colouring. I'll link her below. Uh, she's got her own YouTube channel and um, I just thought it was lovely. It's a very simple, simplified, simplistic, <laughs> that's three in the same word, uh, book, uh, which could be enjoyed from ages eight to 80. You know, it's, it's a really, really nice, cute, charming, simple book. So let's have a look at the back. It says, popular artist and illustrator Jane Maday provides relaxing floral and wildlife scenes along with helpful front of the book instruction on basic tools and materials for creating different effects with coloured pencils. This is a really long sentence. Coloured pencils, markers, blending tools and more. Set your worries free with this wonderful activity to focus your mind on all the blessings of the natural world. Perfect, as I said, for all ages. So 50 plus colouring pages. And yeah, it is very sweet artwork. So let's have a look inside. We've got a book belongs to page. Let me get this lined up. And this was actually a gift, this book. I put it on my wish list after um, PNW Colorist let me know about it. And one of you beautiful people, the lovely Maxine, sent it to me as a gift. And I just, I mean, I'm always a bit mm, about gifts. But at the same time, I absolutely love it when one drops through the door. It's like a little hit of serotonin purely because somebody's thought about me, you know, and it's it's really, really nice. Um, it's unnecessary, but it is really lovely to receive a gift. So thank you very, very much, Maxine. So as you can see on the front two pages, we've got the title page and we've got a whole illustration area to colour as well. I love this bear. Um, yeah, so you've got you, you're colouring straight from the get go in this book. And again, we've got more illustration around the border and an introduction from Jane. So she's just telling you that this is a way of finding comfort, relaxation and creativity. There's no right or wrong way to do it and you can use whatever you like. So she's also varied the complexity of the drawings in the book. So there are some more simplistic ones and there are some more slightly detailed ones like these here. So that's why I said it's really good for anybody, any age that wants to, to get in there and start colouring. So this is the bit which was mentioned on the back, which tells you a little bit about tools and materials that you might want to use. So we've got pencils, crayons, gel pens, watercolour markers, alcohol markers and blending tools as well. Then we've got some markers and pencil shading examples. So this is how you can shade your flowers. If you wanted a little tip on how to do it, starting dark in the centre, going out to light. And yeah, that's a really nice inclusion in the book. You don't often get it, uh, so it's nice when it's there and in full colour as well. So here we go. This is the first illustration. And as you can see, it is quite basic. There are a lot of large areas, which is fantastic if you're wanting to practice your shading. So, for example, if you want to practice a three or four colour blend on a petal, it might be better to do something that's got a large area. Um, so that you can really get it right rather than trying to fit it into a minuscule um, shape. So that's that one. Again, really wide open spaces, um, very simple flowers. We do have some, book, uh, some pages with quotes and phrases on them as well. So these will be good for um, taking out and framing, maybe giving as a gift, displaying up on your wall. And this one's a little bit more detailed, so we've got quite a few different flowers going on, but still some really nice wide spaces. Fantastic for markers, which is what I've used on my page. So when we get there, you'll see. And obviously with them being single sided, you can do whatever you like. Just make sure you put some bleed proof paper behind or something to stop it. You can see that a couple of my markers have transferred here when I've just stabbed them into the side of the book by accident. Um, yeah, so we've got jellyfish loads and loads of big open spaces it's fantastic for marker blending um and yeah easy for those who are a little bit daunted by by um detail in coloring pages so oh here it is already i didn't think it was this quick into the book so i actually just finished this last night and i am like stoked with how it's turned out um i used copic markers for the majority of the illustration 
and a white paint pen to do all of the little embellishments and dots and things which I always add and I love just sets it off then for the gemstones I did a little one minute short tutorial on how I draw the facets of the gemstone and how I use different shades of alcohol marker to colour it in so if you go back onto my channel it'll be like the first short on there and um, yeah I used some Starlight's paint that I was given by a wonderful friend I'll just get it out for you so I can show you yeah it's called Starlight's metallic paint this is rich gold and it's by Imagination Crafts it is how big is this I thought it said somewhere it's a lot of paint anyway I'm not sure ah 50 mil 50 mil bottle so you're getting quite a lot of paint and like I say I don't I can't tell you how much they cost or anything like that because it was a gift from a friend um but you can just see it's gorgeous it's gorgeous it's uh water based as well so it's not acrylic or anything and as you can tell by the shine around the gems it is super super shiny and non-transferable as well so really like it what else did I use? Ah, yes, I used a Spectrum Noir Crystal Clear um, Sparkle Pen on the B-Wings. So I'm just going to bring that to camera so you can see, hopefully, on the wings that there is a sparkle to them. And I really like using the Crystal Clear because it has no pigment to it, obviously, and it just gives it that bit of sparkle without any colour or anything. It doesn't change anything that you've done underneath. Now, the B... I'm, I love how this has turned out, but I can't take credit for it entirely because it was uh, done following a tutorial from Sandy Olnock, which I will link in the description if you want to have a go at it as well. It was done with Copic markers, polychromos pencils because they can sharpen to a point for the fur. And I also added in, off my own steam, some yellow thin Posca um, because this was looking just a little bit too enclosed, a little bit too much red, I think, I put on there. So I've used that really fine Posca pen. It was this one here. It's a, let's see, um, 0.7 millimetre pin type Posca. And that's what I used just to add in a few more flicks of yellow fur. I also put a very slight bit of white gel pen and then sort of blended it out with my finger like that just to give more of a highlight on the fur. But yeah, really like how this has come out. Um, one of my pens exploded and that's why I've got this weird area down here. Uh, I've tried to cover it up with copious layers of paint and it just keeps showing through. So we'll just ignore that bit. Um, but yes, I am really pleased with how that's turned out. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but one of these elements on the page was actually cut out and stuck back in. And I hope you can't tell. I think I've done quite a good job actually at, um, at you not being able to tell. But if you look on the back here, you can see all of my alcohol marker bleed through. And there's a big patch here, big square, where I initially started to colour it as a honeycomb with, um, you know, original kind of like oranges and yellows and making it like a swirly piece of honey. And it just turned out rubbish. I don't even think I've still got it. I thought I saved it to show you so we can have a laugh, but no. Um, so I got a craft knife and I cut around that and um, just stuck another piece to the back and coloured it in. But you can't tell. So that's good. <laughs> so yeah, love it. Uh, next up, we have got a bird in, well, this kind of looks like a nest frame. This is nice big again big open spaces you don't get this a lot in coloring books for adults because they're always full crammed with lots of detail and sometimes it's nice just to have these big spaces to to um to experiment with i mean you could do all sorts with this you know you could do markers you could do gel pen embellishments of your own um yeah so it is nice to have that now look at these two cute bunnies i think they're on the front no they're not <laughs> these are lovely again flowers flowers and animals it's all about nature and you can of course practice your fur on here as well i'm going to be a bit quicker as i go through the book because there are a lot of pages and there's only so much you can say <laughs> um so gardening tools gloves flowers watering can fantastic we've got another quote page here these look like hummingbirds we've got time for tea really nice very uh charming teacups there this is like a pagoda or a gazebo or something that you would have in the garden where you will have your little tea parties with a cute little duck outside 
then we've got a lighthouse, a little lighthouse cottage um, on the, the shore there. Be really nice open space again for you to practice maybe pastel skies, um, anything like that really. And obviously the sea. We've got some toadstools with a cute little dormouse. And again, these look like pansies. I think these are pansies and I'm pretty sure I've coloured a pansy in the past. I'm not sure if I did a tutorial on it. I might have done. I can't remember. Ride your bike. So <laughs> interesting, interesting quote. Um, yeah, but it is nice just to have the zoomed in um, profile of the bike as well, because normally when you have a bike with flowers hanging out of the basket, it's the whole thing and the wheels are made of flowers. You've seen it in Johanna Basswood before. Um, but this is nice to be zoomed in and just have the edge of the wheel and the edge of the frame. We've got a dream catcher full of feathers and florals. And that cute little mouse again, trying to make friends with the butterfly. We've got the berries to colour as well. This one definitely more detailed. It's a very intricately um, designed or decorated jug, jug, vase, jug. Uh, loads and loads of mini flowers on here as well. This looks like a water pump. Yes, I think it is a water pump. And we have some apples in a bucket just hooked over the top there. So to wash your fruit down when you've done foraging. Life is sweet. So as you know, I love my bees and uh, this will be a really good one to colour. You don't often see the hive without the honeycomb. So it's nice uh, to see like the outer shell of a hive. Um, and you've got your flowers too. Is this the rabbit from the front? Yes, there's the rabbit from the front. So rabbit and bird, again, fur and feathers. Then we've got a turtle or a tortoise rather with lots of different um, detail and design on there. Lots of different patterns. So you can probably use some of these patterns as reference or inspiration for the bigger spaces that we have in the book. You know, if you wanted to draw your own patterns. We've got a couple of birds, big florals again. What's this? This is, I think this is a basket of flowers. It looks as though it is. It's quite oddly, quite oddly shaped. It's almost concave here, but Again, lots of flowers to colour. We've got that beautiful bear that we saw at the beginning of the book on a larger scale, and he's just foraging for berries. He's got a little bee friend or a couple of bee friends just whizzing around. Um, yeah, it's nice. I, again, I worry how I would do the fur. So it would be nice to have a little bit of direction on that, but I'd love to see if any of you guys have coloured it. Come to the garden. We've got a bird bath. This looks like some sort of finch, I think. I was kind of into birds for a little bit. Um, I used to do photography. This is my camera and I haven't used it for ages. And I wish, look how dusty it is. And I wish I could get back into it because I used to love taking pictures of birds and wildlife. But I th yeah, I think this is a finch. Um, and I like the bird bath. It's nice and intricate. We've got another jar of flowers or a vase of flowers. <laughs> Uh, this almost looks like a teapot that's been repurposed, I think, as a, a flower holder. And we've got a bird box, so a little bird house, and he's just peeping out of the hole, all his family. Then we have a boot, a cowboy boot, in fact, that has been taken over by the land. <laughs> Flowers are growing out of it, the birds are getting in there. Um, interesting, you often see a Wellington boot with flowers. I think I've drawn one of those myself, actually. Uh, but not a cowboy boot. So interesting take on that, Jane. Then we've got a lovely little rabbit holding some flowers, almost like a little present. This, this book is actually perfect for spring and Easter. It's perfect for this time of year. Then we've got Follow Your Heart, which is a, a compass with hearts. <laughs> so obvious. Um, yeah, I really like the hand-drawn quality of this as well, because you can see that this circle isn't perfect. The circle border here, it's too close this side and too far apart this side. But I like that. I don't like things that look too digital. I can never say that word, digital. Um, yeah, so I really like how you can tell that it's been drawn by hand. We've got a cuckoo clock. Again, he's speaking out, telling the time. My nana used to have one of these cuckoo clocks with the two little things on. What were they for? Did they do anything? I don't know if you could pull them or they were just there for decoration. We've got a really cute couple of little chicks, little ducklings. Um, 
just pacing through the flowers. Again, there's not a lot of background or anything for you to colour. It's kind of like just little standalone images and you can put a background in there if you're artistically inclined to do so. We've got a farmer's market. So we've got coriander, tunip, uh, tunip. <laughs> I was going to say tomato and turnip. Turnip, tomato, onion, radish, carrot, sage and English peas. So again, very good practice. I have done a video and a practice sheet for how to colour vegetables, which I'll put in the description if I remember. So I'm not actually sure if I've done turnips and radishes though. And now I've done tomatoes, onions, carrot. So at least you can use it for reference. We've got a watering can full of flowers, which is very similar to what I coloured the other week. This one here, uh, which I also have a tutorial for. So if you wanted to draw a weathered watering can, you can do that. We've got another birdhouse with a floral um, addition on the back. It's been extended. It's had an extension. Did it put planning permission into the council? I don't know. But <laughs> um, yeah, so... Yeah, there's some interesting and unique ideas in the book, actually, like the cowboy boot and things where I've not really seen it before. This is another very kind of gardeny type of illustration. These would be nice ones to colour for, you know, an aunt or a gran or someone that really likes gardening, maybe someone that's retired or somebody that has an allotment. You can imagine these being put up um, in a conservatory or in the allotment shed or something, you know. I really like the idea of that. And we've got a fox. Again, there's no shading, so I'd worry about where to place fur. But well, hopefully you can use a reference photo and that'll guide you a little bit. We've got a hanging basket. Another thing that you don't often see in um, colouring books. I'm trying to think because obviously, obviously Johanna Basford has done so many different floral uh, landscapes and things. Um, but I can't recall seeing a hanging basket. She probably has. She's done literally everything to do with flowers. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is nice. I like all the trailing flowers, the ivy and things like that. There is a lot of illustrations in this book, isn't there? It just goes on and on. It's very thick. The paper is really thick as well. I'll talk about that in a minute. So we've got that finchy bird back again. And we've got some hanging hearts. These look like decorations, uh, maybe for Christmas or, or something like that. I know that um, in our local park... It's a nature reserve and people went and hung baubles and decorations on the trees there. And that looked really nice as you're walking around just to see. That reminds me of this. Another birdhouse. <laughs> Lots of birdhouses to colour. And here we have the obvious choice of Wellington boot with flowers. And I've done something very, very similar to this. Um, I think I've seen it done lots of times. It's nice to have it. It's nice to practice. Um, but yes, it's not by any means unique. Then we've got a bird in the nest. A couple of birds on some cherry blossoms, I think these are. And the hummingbirds. These are like trumpet flowers and these are those, um, oh, what do they call them? I can't remember. I saw some in Flowerscape the other day. I can't remember what they're called. More big open florals with heavier line art. And we've got an underwater one, strangely, out of nowhere. We've got a message in a bottle, lots of seashells and seaweed to colour. And of course, Mr Octopus holding on to some hearts. We've got an owl to colour. So this will be interesting because it has been sectioned off, but obviously there's no shading. So it'd be interesting to see how people tackle this. I would love to see a, a professional colourist and artist colour this in. Like you see these videos on YouTube, professional artist colours, kids colouring book, and just see this transformed into a hyper-realistic owl. I wonder if that could be done. Not by me, <laughs> that's for sure. We've got some turtles. So we're underwater scene again, lots of seaweed. And we've got another watering can full of flowers. And we've got, it's always time for tea, some stacked teacups. There we go. Now at the end, we've got a colour swatch page. This is really cute because it's all little eggs that have been laid uh, and you can try out your markers, your pencils, just to give them a swatch and see how they act. Now here she is, lovely Jane. It says that she uh, she was a scientific illustrator for the University of Florida. Wow. Um, and I think she now lives in Colorado, which is oh, it's amazing. It's beautiful. I've never been, but just looking at it, you know, in pictures, it's amazing. Um, so yeah, fantastic, 
thank you so much Jane for a beautiful book um, talking about the paper it is very smooth uh, obviously I use markers but I did use some pencil as well on top of the marker and it seemed to go down quite well but I think we'll do a little bit of a test because it definitely feels smooth it's bright white there's no coloration to it whatsoever it's not ivory or cream um, but yes it is very smooth let me get some pencils uh, let's go for let's have a magenta uh, orange and then uh, let's see uh, that one sunburst yellow let's try and go for pinky orange pinky orangey yellow let's see how these prisma colors lay down so i'm gonna switch this to the side a little bit so i've got a better angle let's try and color a little gradient on here it feels great to be honest even just from the get-go it, it's laying down really smoothly there's no um resistance from the paper whatsoever so i guess it does have a light tooth it just feels more smooth than anything else. It reminds me of the book Flowerscape that I reviewed the other day in that it initially does feel smooth. You'd say that's a smooth cardstock, but it clearly has some tooth there because of how nicely the pigment is being gripped, even on a light pressure. is where I go silent and I'm concentrating. It may not be an ideal paper for layering because of the lack of tooth. But I think if you are just doing basic colouring like this and you don't want to do thousands upon thousands of layers, if you haven't got the patience for that like me, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with this paper whatsoever for pencil, at least for these pencils. I'll try some polychromos in a minute. With them being oil based, we do like to give a little test for each type of pencil. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not perfect, but it definitely, it definitely goes down. It's very vibrant. Uh, let's try those polychromos like I said I never get prepared for my reviews you know I'm always fumbling looking through looking through drawers for different colours right I'm just going to pick these greens out so what we've got here we've got deep cobalt green uh, what will blend with you chrome oxide and something lighter come here you what's this one light halo green let's give that a go that might be I might be all right. Okay. So, as you know, polychromos and oil-based pencils need a little bit of a different approach in that you do have to colour very lightly with them in order to get the best payoff at the end. And it's a little bit more of a tedious process, but people do like it. People like, I guess, the mindfulness of it and building up the layers. Um, and obviously it doesn't have any wax bloom that you would get with a wax based pencil like Prismacolor. And the blends are sometimes quite often much nicer than you can get with a wax based pencil. So as you can see, I'm colouring quite lightly. Not like with the Prismas where I just, you can go hell for leather on that and just use as much pressure as you want really. I am being a little bit more restrained with this. So that's like the first layer. It's not... Um, it's not vibrant, it's not fully burnished, so this is where you have to do multiple layers. We'll see how this paper turns turns out with the layered approach. 
I mean, even with polychromos, I don't do that many layers. I know some people do loads, but I don't have the patience for it, so. It does feel nice though, it feels okay. I mean, I would ideally like a bit more texture. But there's nothing wrong with how this is going. Especially on a book that has quite simplistic illustrations. I mean, that's not to say that you just have to block colour them like a two-year-old, but um, it also means that as long as you can do a basic gradient, it's going to turn out looking lovely. And yeah, that can be achieved. So I'm happy with that. Like I say, it's not my favourite paper. Same as Flowerscape. Uh, it's not ideal for coloured pencils, but it works. So that's all we can ask for, really. Uh, especially at the price point of this book. Now, let me just get it up on Amazon because, again, I didn't do my due diligence, due diligence, due diligence to see how much this is on Amazon. But I know it is very cheap. So... Nature's Sweet Moments, colouring book, <laughs> it's giving me honey, here we go, so here's the book on Amazon, Nature's Sweet Moments, 50 designs plus, and it's just £6.49, so for all of those pages, even if you just bought it as a practice book to practice your blending in big areas, you can't go wrong. And I mean, you can achieve nice things with it. So it's not as if it's too basic for an adult to colour. I just think it's a steal and everybody should have a copy because it's that cheap um, for what you're getting. The amount of illustrations, uh, the paper is really thick paper despite being um, smooth. But yeah, I just think for that price, you should have a copy, you know, just even as a practice book, like I say, but not to do injustice to the illustrations by saying use it as a practice book because you can achieve nice things. But Yes, I'll leave the link in the description. I don't think there's anything more I can say about this other than I really do recommend it. At the price point it's at specifically, um, I think it's a great bargain. And it's a really thick book. Look how thick. I don't know if you can tell. Let's give it a measure. You guys in America do things by inches, but we do it by centimetres. So let me just have a look. So it's like 1.2 centimetres, which is in inches what is this like half an inch thick no hang on yeah half an inch thick so it's really really thick it's a nice substantial book and you can use anything you want in it single-sided so there you go there's my glowing recommendation for nature's sweet moments i hope you've enjoyed this review and i will see you soon on color with claire